Tonight on News 46, check your mailbox. $10,000 could be yours. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue Chief gets a surprise. And the Pahrump Valley Cruisers invade Petrick Park this weekend. News 46 starts now. News 46 is brought to you by... by affiliated chiropractic and affiliated physical therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. You're watching KPVM. News 46 at 5 with Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Thursday, April 14th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Topping our news this evening, you have a 1 in 18,000 chance to win $10,000 this weekend. Those are great odds no matter where you play. Check your mailbox. Society Trudeau has mailed out 18,000 flyers to Pahrump residents. And if you have the correct number on yours, you're the winner. Well, we're having a big sale, a liquidation sale. It's a $37 acquisition sale. Uh, we're giving away gold coins. And everybody in Peru, we sit down, we sent out 18,000 of these flyers. Wow. They have codes on them. You bring those codes down. If it matches, you could win $10,000. Wow. That $10,000 winner is out there. Wow. So this is only in the town of Perump? Only in Perump. Wow. That's a pretty good chance. That's very good odds. We love our town. So any chance we get to do stuff like this, we love to do it. Is it $10,000 cash or do you use it towards a car purchase? Of course, we'd love you to use it for a car purchase. So, uh... But we, we just love to give the $10,000 away. I mean, that would just tickle us to death. So uh, if you get these, bring them in. The winners out there, we would love nothing more than to give that $10,000 away. Please come see us. This place is hopping today. We got so many good deals and so many beautiful cars. Tell us what's going on. Well, it's a $37 acquisition sale. What that means is you come in, you pay $37, okay. you pick the car you want, mm -hmm. and you drive it home and you start making payments. Huh. That is fantastic. It's as easy as that. I know it sounds easy and it feels, oh, it's going to be a lot harder than that when we get down there. It's not. You come down, come see us, and we'll show you the way. Beautiful cars. What's the sale dates down here in the Prump Nugget parking lot? We're here till the 17th. The 17th is our last day of the sale, so uh, that's four days. We have four days to really make this happen. So You can get a loan right here at the tent, right? We do everything here. Wonderful. Everything we do here. So. What should a person bring with them? Well, Besides 37 bucks. <laughs> bring yourself and your $37 and your flyer and uh, come down. Well, the tables were turned on Fire Chief Scott Lewis as he was the patient yesterday after he almost lost his finger crushing it under a weight. This accident happened one day before his 50th birthday. The media surprised the chief this morning at the fire and rescue with a special happy birthday. Well, the whole gang showed up here at Prump Valley Fire and Rescue Services this morning. The gang being the Prump Valley Times, the Prump Mirror, and of course, News 46, Town Manager Bill Kolbarger, and Town Board Member Vicki Parker to wish our very own Fire Chief Scott Lewis a happy 50th birthday. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> ah, where's the balloon? Hey, guys. Oh. Hold it. How are you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear old guy, happy birthday to you. Boy, I owe my wife a lot today, don't I? I came into this mess this morning. <laughs> you came into this mess because of Jamie Cook? Yes. Oh, it yes. looks pretty. It's beautiful. Yeah. Hey, happy birthday, Chief Lewis. Fortunately, we're at the uh, fire department, so if those 50 candles get out of control, we can put them out. Happy birthday. We just want to wish Fire Chief Scott Lewis, our awesome boss, a happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy Chief. Happy birthday, Chief. Hey, happy birthday, old guy. 50 years old, not bad for a young fire chief. Happy birthday, Scott. Happy birthday, Scott, to all of us at the Prump Valley Times, to you. 
on your birthday. 50-50. It's all yours, man. Happy birthday, Scott. Happy number 50 from the entire town board. Happy birthday. Thank you. Was <laughs> <laughs> this a surprise? Yeah, well, I knew I was going to be 50, <laughs> so that really wasn't too much of a surprise. But well, As you can see in some of those pictures, Fire Chief Scott Lewis has an injured finger, almost losing his finger, actually, yesterday when he dropped a weight on it here at the fire station. He is recovering, however, it was a very bad injury. We wish him the best, and of course, thank you to Jamie Lewis for letting us know about Scott's 50th, and as well, Tim Murray, for um, adding to this wonderful surprise and everybody else who attended including town manager bill Kalberger and vicki parker and prop valley times and the prop valley mirror we want to wish scott lewis a very happy 50th the prompt valley cruisers show and shine will be held this saturday at petrick park the event is a fundraiser that this nonprofit 501 501c3 holds to benefit the children in the town of prompt well, we got the, the Valley Cruises have their show and shine this weekend. Mm -hmm. And we want to invite everybody to come on down. Uh, it's, there's a lot of prizes that's going to be given out. Uh, and on top of that, there's, uh, I want to thank all the local vendors for supporting the Va Valley Cruises and this car show. So for everybody here in Perum, thank you very much. This is going to be at Petrick Park this weekend. You can't miss it because you're just going to see the place just flooded with classic cars. What a great show it is. And we're looking for people to come out with their families. And between 12 and 1, we're going to actually have a free raffle for children. And, and so keep their little fingers off of there. And for our entertainment this year, we've had so many people come forward that want to be part of our event. And uh, so... Uh, DJ Sampson, uh, Brian Cust Customer, Sun Cloggers, Nevada Silver Tappers, Jimmy D, Mike Reed, Redder is always furnishing the stage again this year. We're so lucky to have him. CNS Waste Solutions, Valley Electric Association, Perot Valley Times, the and naturally Channel 46. <laughs> One last go musicians, they're going to perform in the morning, the Cinderella Girls, and we want to thank our grounds and building department, Matt and his two famous workers that come out on their weekend to help us. This is going to be so much fun. What time does it start at Petro Park? Uh, it's going to start, uh, the, the gates will open at uh, 6 o'clock. So it'll go on until 4 o'clock. All right, and coming up after the break, Ash Meadows is hosting a tour. And we'll have your final 2011 tax tip of the week. This and more after the break. Keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... by affiliated chiropractic and affiliated physical therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Welcome back to News 46. This weekend, the Armagosa Conservancy will be hosting a tour at Ash Meadows, or of Ash Meadows, rather. We spoke to Donna Lamb to find out more. Really exciting. Well, first of all, it's uh, through the Amargosa Conservancy. And this weekend on Saturday the 16th, we have a field trip out to Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. And uh, for those of you who may have been there before, things have changed a lot. They've put in boardwalks and sculptures, and the place is just gorgeous. They've done a lot of restoration work, and it's really exciting. So um, basically, for those of you who want to go to Shoshone first, they're meeting at the Shoshone office of the Amargosa Conservancy at 9 o'clock, or you can meet us at 10 o'clock at the uh, Crystal Springs headquarters of the National Wildlife Refuge in, in Ash Meadows. And this is free? This is free, yes. Of course, we always like donations if possible, but it's absolutely free to the public. And there's so many exciting things that they've done there. And uh, tell me where we're going to go. We're going to go from location to location when we get there? Yes, and, and part of that's a surprise, but we definitely will go to Crystal Springs first, which is, uh, I don't know if you know about Crystal Springs, but out of the ground is coming 2,800 gallons per minute 
of warm, salty water. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> and then we'll, of course, go to Point of Rocks because that's where a lot of the sculptures in the new boardwalk are. Mm -hmm. And there's several other sites that we may attend. Mm -hmm. and, and I should say, definitely bring water, wear a hat, sunscreen, and probably lunch because it'll be a couple hours, you know, three, four hours altogether. And then we have a day to clean up Crystal Springs. Yeah, actually, it's a different Crystal Springs. A lot of people don't realize that there are two of them in this area. Um, the cleanup day is in the Kingston Mountains, which is directly south of here. It's actually on the California side, but um, it's it's in our view shed here. And uh, there's a place called Crystal Springs, and we're going to be doing a cleanup. There's some old mining equipment and junk and you know stuff from people camping. It's a beautiful area. There's springs and trees and grass, and it's just lovely. So uh, it'll make a nice little uh, cleanup day, and that'll be on May the 21st. That's near Tacopa, right? Yes, uh -huh, you go through Tacopa to get there. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for volunteers to help out, lots of fun, and uh, a little more detail on that. Yes, we're going to have uh, hot dogs and probably beer, but <laughs> that's for after the cleanup. Uh, but yeah, we'll have a little picnic afterwards. It'll be really fun. That is going to be a lot of fun. Do you need to call people to reserve or tell them that you're coming for that? Yeah, that would be great if people could do that just so that we know how many to expect. And uh, that would be the Amargosa Conservancy office. That number is 760-852-4339. And can I say one last word about Ash Meadows? A lot of people do not realize, it's just over the hill from here in Amargosa Valley, people don't realize that, that there is the second highest number of endemic species in North America. Not just the United States, but in North America. And endemic species are critters and plants that are found nowhere else in the world except for ash meadows. As you may know, tomorrow is tax day. This is our last Jackson Hewitt tax tip of the season. We'd like to thank Jackson Hewitt and Kay for all the weekly tax tips, and we'll see you next year. Tax tip of the week is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt Tax Services. Hi, it's Kay with this week's Jackson Hewitt tax tip. Did you take money out of a retirement account this year? And are you under 59 and a half? You probably will have to pay a 10% penalty on that money that you withdrew. So don't forget when you do your tax return, if you're under 59 and a half, you may have to pay that 10% penalty. So just watch for that form and watch for those penalties. Hope that helps. This is Kay with this week's Jackson Hewitt Tax Tip. Tax Tip of the Week is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt Tax Services. All right, on this week's Town Board Agenda was the discussion and possible decision regarding the Last Chance Park, which is a proposed trailhead for hikers and equestrian leading into the Shadow Mountains. The Town Board was looking to, at three options for approval. Number one, proceed with the mitigation of the location at Bell Vista and Benovich, not to exceed $10,000. Or option two, state the process to investigate location two, Simpkins and Benovich. And option three, discontinue the project entirely. Discussion and possible decision to approve one of the following three options pertaining to the next step on last chance park development. Option one, proceed with the mitigation of location. Number one to Belvest and Banovich, not to exceed $10,000. Option number two, start the process to investigate location number two, which is Banovich and Simpkins Road. And location number three, um, State Route 160. Or option number three, discontinue the entire project. Uh, they talked about, they didn't say exactly where it was or what exactly they found, but of course we know that they found something on site one, but they also said that they found it on site two, they found stuff too. So if we were to elect to go for site, site two, we'd just be three. starting all over oh, again. Mrs. Yeah. Parker was gracious enough to drive me around and show me all these things, and one of the things that kind of bothered me about site number three was that uh, apparently there's an old wagon trail there, and I'd kind of hate to see that get destroyed. With that, I'm going to make a motion to go ahead and, and, and approve uh, up spending up to $10,000 to Final, the mitigation of location number one on Bell Vista and Banovich. Robert Adams, uh, Public Lands Advisory Board. Mark Spencer from the BLM is encouraging us to find another site. What we've gotten back from the State Historic Preservation Office is that no project will be shut down to due to a disagreement of preservation needs. 
Some forms of adjustment will be worked out. She also indicated that hiring an archaeologist should be the very last consideration. The town and the BLM should be able, with the State Historic Preservation Office participation, to work this thing out. Individually, I want a yes vote just to, to get this going. Uh, on the other hand, give us a few weeks, and I think we can avoid the mitigation costs. These pipes have been here over 150 years, and I think they have a right to be here at these meetings. And I've always been told here the last few years that this last chance parking costs the taxpayers nothing, but there's thousands of dollars being spent. And I don't want to hear about the impact fees because it's, there's money been spent already. If there's been bones found up there and that woman's buried there, then there's more to it than just adifart, adifacts. There's more to it. So give them the two weeks, let them come in here and have their presentation. All those in favor of item number one, the mitigation of the location of number one, Belvista and Banovich, not to exceed $10,000, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay, motions and fails to two to three. Well, the town board ultimately voted against three to two because of the possibility that Native American remains have been discovered at a nearby location. This item will be scheduled to be placed back on the town board agenda in two weeks, after which the town board will speak to the Piyot tribe to get suggestions and address their concerns. And Deanna, I know you know a little bit more about this. They found remains out there. About five years ago, I did a story about some remains that were found uh, in the Stephanie, and I believe it's Simpkins area. And they were actually, they, the crime scene unit came out from Vegas and actually took possession of the remains that two teenagers had actually found them. And UNLV, their anthropology department, actually determined that they were, in fact, um, a Native American remains in a Native American burial ground, and they actually placed them back. They from, were between two rocks up there. From the Paiute tribe? Um, I'm not sure if it's from the Paiute tribe, but I know that, in fact, there are remains up there that are buried as a Native American burial ground. But, wow, well, that was yeah. very interesting. Folks, we're going to have a look at weather coming up for you right after this break. Please don't go anywhere. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to News 46. I'm Rick Vale with your weather. Today we had a high of 72 degrees. It was beautiful out there with winds gusting up to about 14 miles per hour, which isn't too shabby, all things considered, over the past couple months. Pressure is holding steady on the barometer, 30.28, and sunrise was at 6.12 a.m. A record high was 93 degrees back in 1990. Looking at tonight, looking to be pretty much clear yet again. 45 for the low. Winds out of the north northeast at 5 miles per hour, so it's going to be really nice for everybody out there, if not just a little too cool. 7.17 p.m. will be our sunset, and our record low is 29 degrees back in 1993. Looking at our 7-day forecast, Friday is going to be nice for everybody. 81 degrees for the high, 53 degrees for the low. No winds really expected, maybe about 8 miles per hour, but you know how things are out here in Pahrump. That can shift on a dime. Saturday, the weekend, gusts up to 20 miles per hour, 87 degrees for the high, 51 for the low. Sunday, 26 mile per hour gusts, 85 degrees for the high, 53 degrees for the low. And as you can see again, we got partly cloudy skies listed all over the board. And really what that just means is we're going to have a little sporadic cloud cover here or there. Pretty much going to be clear almost all week long, so it's very nice for everyone. Monday, 83 degrees for our high, 49 degrees for our low, with gusts up to 26 miles per hour. Tuesday, 26, yet again for our gusts, a high of 78 and a low of 47. Wednesday, hump day, 75 degrees for our high, with 45 degrees for our low. Winds up to 27 miles per hour, not too shabby, at least compared to what we had last week. And 22 mile per hour gusts expected on the last day of our seven day forecast next Thursday, with a high of 81 and a low of 48. <coughs> And the Prompt Town Arena Advisory Board will be meeting tonight at the Prompt Town Annex at Basin and Highway 160 from 7 to 10 p.m. And St. Martin's in the Desert Episcopal Church in partnership with Night Communities Coalition and the Prompt Community Library is hosting a teen night at the Prompt Community Library tomorrow night at 5.30 to 8 p.m. Middle school through high school are 
age students are invited to come out for the, an evening of free food, karaoke, and Wii games. And I know I love karaoke. You like karaoke? Yes, I like karaoke. <laughs> I don't play Wii, though. I, yeah, I bet you do, though. Uh, you better believe it. <laughs> for more information, you can call the Nye Communities Coalition office at 727-9970. And Earth Day has been scheduled for Saturday, April 23rd at Ian Deutsch Park. Tomorrow night, we will have more on this event. The Prump Town Cleanup is scheduled for May 7th from 7 a.m. till noon. You can call 727-5800 to schedule your area to clean. And Deanna, thanks a lot for coming in today and helping oh, yeah, out. We wonderful. really appreciate it. You're the hardest woman, hardest working woman out here in Pahrump, and we know it. I'm going to get a name tag. <laughs> That's right. We're going to have to get you. We're going to have jackets made. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Folks, that does it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. From everyone up here on the Hill KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Pahrump.